Hello! If you're a subscriber, thank you for staying with me. And as you already know, this is Fairy Godfather Knits. I'm Fairy Godfather, aka Matthew, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about knitting, design, and creativity. If you are new, welcome. I'm very happy you found me here, and I look forward to getting to know you better. You could introduce yourself in the comments below. Um, it's been a long time since my last video, uh, which is why I'm saying a particular thank you to my subscribers who have stuck with me and who let me know that they were looking forward to more content and excited for my next video. Those comments really got me through um, what was a bit of a difficult summer in some ways. In other ways, it was great. Everything's fine. Um, everybody's healthy. So I have a lot to be grateful for. Don't worry about that. Um, I just mean more so in terms of being a creator on YouTube and what that brings with it sometimes. I was maybe unprepared for some of the negative comments I received on my last couple of videos and people who, um, yeah, I just don't think appreciated the spirit in which I was offering things. Um, I just got some comments saying that I was a takedown artist and that my last two videos had just been rants and that really wasn't my intention. Um, so I... I think it caught me a little off guard that some people were perceiving it that way or taking it that way. And I think on this channel, I'd have the privilege of being so um, just open and vulnerable and emotional about my love of knitting and my love of yarn and um, the journey I've been on so far that um, I think I forgot that this is also a very public forum on the internet and that people will have all kinds of reactions to what they see here. So listen, like if you're not enjoying my content and you feel the need to unsubscribe, I'm sorry to see you go and you are always welcome back. You don't necessarily need to let me know what it is I did wrong to lose you, though I understand some people feel that that's important. Um, anyway, I just want to say that I am here to stay. I am going to keep creating content for you. And so if you take any value from it or you enjoy it in any way, um, please subscribe, please like and share with your friends, tell people about the podcast and um, the Nick cast, as I call it. And um, yeah, I'm just so happy you're here. And I'll just move forward. Hi, let's do this weird shot moment. Um, I'm just adding this in later, obviously. I just wanted to say in reference to those previous videos, specifically the one I made about... Um, Tom Daly and the hands in the air if you just don't flare sweater. I have recently seen that We Are Knitters has taken down their whole con um, collaboration with Tom Daly. I actually just found that out a few days ago. And you might think that that felt vindicating or whatever. It didn't. It felt really bad and I felt really guilty and sad. And um, I hope it's clear that I wasn't like, that's just not the outcome I was looking for. I was looking for honesty and dialogue and transparency and, like, let's just talk about crafting and what's actually going on. So it being taken down like this, like, it's, that's not some victory for me and I'm not, like, proud of it. And if I let myself, I could really worry about it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about it further and I'm just going to move on at this point. I did also want to mention um, a really great channel that I discovered, which is called Emma in the Moment. Her main channel is called Made in the Moment, but this side channel, Emma in the Moment, I'll put it in the show notes, is specifically dedicated to crafting drama. Um, there are some uh, um, like copying accusations on there. There's some other really interesting cases. So if you do like stories of crafting drama and copying allegations and sort of social media weirdness, that would be um, a really great place for you to go. And I just wanted to mention that because I've just, I've really enjoyed those videos and um, they made me feel better about bringing up what I did, which again, was not done in a malicious manner. Like I really didn't want a bad outcome from that. Not that this is necessarily a bad outcome, but it just, it just seems like it could so easily be so different. And um, I don't really understand why it has to be like this. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about that. And I'm gonna move on from here.
Okay, bye. Um, you will notice that I am not in my uh, usual apartment. I uh, I live in sort of a um, extended sublet kind of situation, and so it's a bit precarious. And it just turned out that the leaseholder needed the apartment back for the month of October, which with very little notice. So um, some stuff that I was planning to do in September got pushed and I also was away for part of September. So I've been meaning to get back on here and bring you guys content for a while and life just sort of got in the way as life can often do. And, um, but now I feel like the crunch is on because the um, Stephen West Geo Gradient MCAL is gonna start this week, which I will be doing and I will be posting about uh, weekly and I just have a lot to catch you up on so let's get right into it um, I'm going to tell you about my sort of farewell to summer and all my summer knits and what happened with them as well as um, some other exciting things that have been going on and what I'm going to be knitting into the fall so that's what we are in store for today again thank you so much for being here I really 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 appreciate it and I appreciate every comment and um, it's just great to see you again. So I hope you feel the same way. And uh, I look forward to uh, coming at you a lot more regularly and um, with a lot of content, hopefully this month. So I typically, like many knitting vloggers, will show my finished objects at the beginning of an episode and then my works in progress. And then I don't typically do yarn acquisitions. It's just not my focus. And then I sometimes talk about um, design aspirations or ideas that I have that I'm kicking around. So I will sort of be doing that today, but um, there's just so much and such a weird variety of things and projects in such a strange variety of states that it might just be a little bit more chaotic today. But we are embracing the chaos magic and the chaos energy because sometimes that's just what you have to do. Um... So I'm going to start sort of focused on um, one designer in particular, who is James N. Watts, who I have um, spoken about several times before, and um, I've been working on several um, of James's designs. So I have three to sort of um, talk about or update you on. One is finished and a success. One is finished and not quite a success. And one is unfinished and not quite a success. And it may surprise you to learn that though I had to check if I was recording. I keep on I keep on speaking without having pressed record. Um, it may surprise you to learn that the one that is unfinished is the one that I'm wearing. Um, this is the rib lace raglan by James and Watts, and it is still on the needles. This was the first time that I um, understood the concept of Sleeve Island, which I will get into in a second. But um, yeah, just to say, uh, this is uh, Pearl Soho Santolina. It is 70% uh, cotton, 20% rayon from bamboo, and 10% hemp. And what I was saying in the previous episode was that I, I actually love the material that this creates. I love how it feels on the body. It's sort of a nice mix of like, like it does give some warmth, but it's good for hot weather. Um, so I really like it. And I like the way that this raglan um, sits on me. Uh, here's what I did was the crop is just a bit short for me. Like it's okay, but um, it's quite cropped. And as you can see, like there's, I have problems in the lace that I made. There's one here on the back too. And it's just too high. Like the crop, like I say, is just just up way too high. Um, for me, for my personal comfort or whatever. And um, it's also like curled at the bottom edge. Um, that's one thing I'll say is like the pattern, I'm just paraphrasing, but it says something to the effect of like, if you bind off perfectly, not too loose or not too tight, the material will lay flat and not curl or pucker. And so... I appreciate that and I get what James is saying. At the same time, I'm, as a knitter, I'm looking for some instruction on how to do that, to just be told like, if you do it perfectly, it will look perfect. 
um, without any sort of uh, offering of instruction as to how. I find that um, like a bit weird. But anyway, I wouldn't mind the curl, I think, if it was um, lower. Like, I just should have made it longer. I did see um, there's a podcaster, uh, Jonathan Day, and his podcast is just called Jonathan's Days. Um, he does knitting and a little bit of sewing and other things. Um, and just knits beautiful things. And James, uh, n not James, Jonathan, um, knit a rib lace raglan in, as just a t-shirt um, that looks really great and gorgeous. And so I sort of wish, so I did the long sleeve because the way the model looks in the pattern, there's a long sleeved high cropped version and they look great in it. And I thought that I would too, <laughs> but part of what I'm learning is just that it doesn't always work that way. My whole life, I would say I've been susceptible to that, to like seeing something on a mannequin or seeing something on a model and just wanting it and like wanting, like thinking that I will look like that if I put on that garment, but that is like often not true, right? So anyway, I'm learning my body type. I'm learning um, like what I enjoy wearing and how to like push those boundaries and whatever. So with this, like, I just don't know that I'm gonna finish it at this point. And, like, and that was why. So for those of you who don't know, um, sleeve island is a term, I should look up exactly what it means, but my, my understanding of it anyway is that Often sleeves are boring because they are often just plain stockinette and they're just sort of a long tube. And so people often sort of like lose their momentum when knitting a sweater in the sleeves and they'll say, I'm stuck on Sleeve Island or I'm alone on Sleeve Island or I've been on Sleeve Island forever, you know, like as though you're on a deserted island waiting for rescue kind of thing. And I have long arms and like doing this sleeve just like took forever. And then I was like started on this sleeve and I just got stuck. Like I just, I just was always picking up other projects instead. And then like summer was ending and Labor Day was getting closer. And with this high of a crop, like this, anyway. So like, I just recently gave myself permission to not finish this and it felt so good. One thing I was thinking was just to bind off here and just have one sleeve long and one sleeve short, because why not? And I might do that and keep this just to like sleep in or be around the house in. Like, I don't mind, I don't mind this crop when it's just me. Um, or I might frog the whole thing and start again. Because like I say, I really like the yarn and I do, I like this color. Um, would I knit this whole thing again? Unclear. I'm undecided. Um, but I don't want this to just languish unfinished in a project bag either. So, I don't know. I'm thinking I might frog it. But anyway, so this is the first James N. Watts, the rib lace raglan. Unfinished <laughs> and somewhat unsuccessful. Moving on. Uh, the next James N. Watts design that I want to talk about is one that you have probably seen a lot on the internet and probably seen a lot of other uh, YouTubers talking about, and it is the Pure Mesh Pullover, which I did. I splurged on uh, La Bien Aime. Um, it's a lace weight yarn, it is, and this, I believe, is the La Bien Aime yellow. It's like her signature yellow. And I don't know. So I had started this two summers ago, pulled it out this summer, and I worked on it really hard. And I, I felt really proud <laughs> when I finished it. Like, I remember finishing the ribbing on one of the sleeves and just being like, really proud and happy. <coughs> Sorry, did, some <coughs> did something just fly down my throat, essentially live on camera? Ooh, I believe so. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I was like really happy and proud when I finished this. And I'd seen on James's stories that it can... <coughs> oh my God, sorry. I'm sorry about that. Forgive me. Um, <clears throat> I'd seen on James's stories that um, 
Instagram stories that when the garment is finished, it looks really small. There was one where James said, oh, you might think it's only gonna fit your cat. But then that after blocking and um, and seaming and so on, that there like is a lot of stretch and it like actually fits. Um, so I wasn't worried and I um, started seaming mine and I seamed one sleeve and um, and one side and then I wanted to try it on. <clears throat> Should I put it on for you? And it just ultimately, which I sort of, I could feel this and I sort of knew it was happening but I didn't listen to myself, <laughs> um, which is just that I have really good like uh stretch length like i knew it was long enough i had added extra length i have good like stretch and gauge lengthwise it's the sideways stretch which you know i'm it's something i'm doing like <clears throat> james has <laughs> obviously <laughs> made and designed this many 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 other knitters and youtubers have knitted and seemingly had no problems but for me, it's the it's the side to side stretch. I think is not big enough on mine for some reason. And so when I tried it on, um, the seaming split in the sleeve, and I don't have like particularly swole arms or anything, but the um, the sleeve, uh, my seaming um, like burst, and I could just tell that it w I wasn't going to be able to get the other side closed. I'll put it on. I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay, well, this will give you, like, just some idea. So, like, this is where it's split in the seam. Like, so it just having the wrist, like, it just split, and then, like, this is the seam here, where it's just, like, coming loose. And then, you know, like, it's, it's somewhat, like, but I just don't believe... I mean, you can't see how it's riding up my body, but like, I just don't believe that it's going to, like that I could see the other side. It just, I don't know. It just, I just think it's a bit too narrow. And what's that from? Um, I just kind of lost my confidence. <laughs> I lost my confidence in this project and in myself and I felt like I had screwed it up or something, and um, yeah, I just went from like a really high high to a really low low, and then sort of couldn't work on this anymore. So, like, it was this was like a two summer project, and then it just didn't work out. Um, but like, I'm just saying that that happens sometimes, and it's a learning process. And I don't know what I'm gonna do about this now. Like, the idea of trying to frog all this lace is daunting, and I'm just not sure if I can even do it, but that feels like such a waste of yarn. There is a lot, I have a lot left, so like I'm not necessarily giving up on this forever. I may try to do it again next summer. I may just add more stitches or go up a size or whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, so this was one of my summer pieces that sadly did not work out. And this is my uh, third and final James and Watts uh, project of the summer. And this is the Earth and Air sweater. And this is the one that I'm saying is both finished and a success. Um, I like almost, ah! Sorry, I literally just knocked over the glass of water that I uh, had to get to put down the fly that flew into my throat. The neighbors are drilling in concrete, like just everything that can go wrong is going wrong, but I'm committed to getting this out and getting this done. Anyway, um, I, I almost doubled the length because I wanted it um, long-ish, or like I say, I just have a long torso. Um, I, the sleeves are like a three quarter slash seven eighth length. They are intended to be the same length as the sweater. So I'm like a bit off cause I ended up a bit longer. Like they maybe are supposed to be like that. But again, like with my long arms, I worry that that would just look, would, wouldn't look intentional. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It is, um, I'm not gonna remember the name of this yarn, but I will put it up. It is the one that claims to be the world's softest yarn. I think I, well, I'm sure lots of people claim that. Um, but I know I talked about it in my previous episode. It is primarily silk. Um, and then this is just like a, um, a drops kid mohair. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is the Earth and Air and I'm very happy with it. And I think I will stay in it for the rest of the episode. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna move on now to some uh, finished objects-ish. Um, so this was another thing that happened over the summer, which is that a friend of mine named Curtis Campbell, uh, who's a writer, let me know that uh, he's having his first YA novel published. It's being published by Anik Press. And um, if you're in Toronto, there is going to be a launch for it on October 6th. I'll put a graphic or something up here if I can find one. And um, from what I understand, the novel does deal with the topic of drag. Did I say it's called Dragging Mason County? And uh, so Curtis wanted to do a like fundraiser. Um, as part of it, as part of promoting it. I think there's gonna be some comedians and stuff as well on the 6th. And anyway, point being that he asked Fairy Godfather to um, make some items that could be put up for auction um, in order to raise money. Like he's raising it for charity. Um, so anyway, point being, I, uh, I made a couple hats uh, for him. And for the thing, so this is the um, Lotus Flower Beanie by Bee Knits Handmade. And um, uh, the yarn is Malabrigo Rasta? No, Malabrigo Rios, probably. Um, and you can tell like the colors are just like, <laughs> color A in one is color B in the other, which is why the little flowers are different colors. These haven't been blocked yet. So, okay, they're not all the way finished, but they're virtually finished. They haven't been blocked. And then um, I have pom-poms for them. <laughs> so I got these big, massive pom-poms that are attached by a snap. Um, so, you know, it'll be like this once I'm all done. This pom-pom, I'm less convinced, like the color, it looked a little more red online and was a little more pink in person. I can't, I'm not as convinced that, that this one works. So I'm, that's probably why I haven't attached them yet <laughs> is because I'm just not sure about this. But anyway, we shall see. So anyway, that was just, it was like really, really nice to be asked um, to knit something for somebody. It felt really, really nice to be knitting for charity. There are so many incredible knitting charities out there and I would love to be doing so much more of that. So yeah, this was just like a really nice, um, a really nice, exciting opportunity that came my way. And so anyway, some of my summer was spent uh, knitting up these two as well. Sorry, I'm being a little hyper today. I wanted to say that Curtis is also a knitter and Curtis knits. I also meant to say that Curtis has some intros to himself and the book on YouTube. And while I don't think I can link them in this video, I will definitely link them in the show notes. And so if you're interested in meeting Curtis or finding out more about his book, Dragging Mason County, you can go do so. Um... So, uh, the charity that Curtis is donating to from this launch event fundraiser, it, I don't have the name uh, at my fingertips, or I haven't been told yet, but I know it is a charity that supports trans people. And so I had wanted to um, knit a shawl by a trans designer to donate to the event. Curtis very, very wisely said that a shawl was too much work and too much time and that they probably wouldn't get like what it was worth um, in terms of people donating for it or bidding on it. And it was Curtis who suggested I do hats instead, which at this point I am very grateful for because I have such a tendency to take on too much or try to do too much in too short of a time. Um, 
So case in point, I decided that this was going to be my um, opportunity to do the Bloom and Brioche Shawl by Zandy Peters, um, a design I had long had my eye on and had bought way back at the beginning of time when I started knitting and, um, and just never got around to starting because I have very little experience with brioche. I mean, this sweater, part of doing this sweater was to learn brioche. I'd only done brioche, um, there's a brioche border option on the adult size uh, penguono, which I made for my brother, which I've talked about before. So I'd done a little bit of brioche on there. And then this was really my next brioche project, um, which turned out pretty well. Like I'm pretty happy with it. It is not without error in any way, but um, I can live with the mistakes that are there. Um, so anyway, so I, Spent a lot of time this summer. Oops. Oh, I have it on scrap yarn and it's a bit tight, but um, doing this much of the Blooming Brioche shawl. Um, so, you know, you start, uh, you know, down here. These yarns, um, again, this yarn, both of these two colored yarns that you're seeing here are from that uh, Knit City Apricity box that I got way, way back. The um, darker yarn, which I thought was sort of soil colored, is um, from Cabin Boy Knits, and I'd gotten it when I did the original Elf Male, is that right? Yeah, the original Elf Male, I did like a cochineal color, and then this like henna color that they have, and that's what this is. This skein just keeps giving and giving, like there is so much left of it. So I, um, yeah, I started with that darker, so the, the Blooming Brioche shawl, it goes from, this section is called Roots and Bulbs. And then I was just getting into the shoots and leaves um, when I stopped. Now, like, I don't know what this looks like to you, <laughs> but um, it was a real learning process. There are some like huge increases and decreases in the brioche. As you know, I try to just go for it with knitting. And so I mostly just went for it and I'm mostly like really happy, um, but it is riddled with mistakes. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to point some out as I try to put this in my mouth. I could see one right away. Mm, it's just hard to hold. Oh my God. Anyway, there were some right at the beginning, like these little ones. I think we're supposed to be bigger like this. There's one place where that's not symmetrical. Anyway, I kept getting my count a little bit off. Yeah, see, I think these are different. There's this center line. And then the reason I stopped was um, where I was, and I was expanding, expanding, I realized I didn't have the right number of repeats. So I had like, say, six repeats on one side of center and five repeats on the other side of center. And so it was really like um, messing me up as I went across. Uh, and, and it just, yeah, like you can tell it's not symmetrical like where my thumbs are. It just, I don't know how I could fix it. Like I would, ha I would, I would have to like try to insert a whole like 28 stitch increase or like pattern, uh, pattern repeat in one of the sides, like in the, like it just, it's sort of unfixable at this point. And, or like, I mean, I could really force it and it will like look hideous and asymmetrical, but be my forever, like the shawl that I learned brioche on. But like, I don't know that that's worth it. You know, I think, if anything, I'm probably gonna frog this as well. <laughs> Which again, feels daunting. Like there is the temptation to just leave it forever. But the reason I don't do that honestly is the, it feels like a waste of yarn. Like this yarn is expensive. <laughs> this yarn costs money. Um, this yarn is beautiful and like deserves to be in something that is used by people and that is worn. So I don't want it just sitting in a drawer or a bag somewhere either. Um, but the like, the physical ability to pull all of this out is just a bit beyond me so far. I um, 
I'm part of the Discord, uh, a part of Kelly Menzies' uh, Discord, Roro and Caves, and um, they have a frogging uh, group or a frogging sub-channel on there, and I've been saying that I need their support because I often like intend to frog, but then just let the thing sit around and don't actually do the frogging. So um, you've seen today all the things that I am going to use the support of this community <laughs> to actually frog. So anyway, this is my Blooming Brioche attempt. Um, uh, and oh yeah, I was this um, Artful Bell fingering is left over from my uh, Queer Little Nightmares sweater that I did last year. And then this was another Malabrigo sock that I had around. Um, so anyway, that's just something else that I <laughs> have been up to this summer. Uh, next up is the uh, Naname Tea by Emma Monology. Um, I actually showed this to you um, when I was at this house in the spring. Oh, by the way, this is my mom and dad's house. This is where I grew up uh, because I'm out of my apartment for a month. Uh, I'm back here and this is where I was in the spring. Anyway, I just never got much further than this. Um, so again, like love the pattern, love the look of the garment. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it was just like working with the linen. This is 100% linen, um, Quince & Co. Uh, Sparrow, I believe. And I believe the colorway is birch. Um, <clears throat> it can be hard on your hands. Like people say that about cotton. I definitely feel it with cotton. If I'm working with the cotton for hours, it kind of um, makes my hands rough and raw. But with the linen too, like it just... Um, there's not a lot of give in the stitches. Like everything just feels very um, inelastic. I can't think of a better way to say it. Like there's no stretch and there's no give. So it's, um, yeah, it's just a bit hard on like your literal skin. And it's also, I don't know, it just hurts or something. Like it's just like, there's a, a, a tenseness to it like, I don't know. Anyway, I would just get tired fast. I could only do a, a few rounds of this without, and then I would just, I would just physically want to put it down. So that kind of was stopping me. Um, but I do like the look of it, but I kind of, um, I would just get off when I, when I put it down and picked it up again, I would get off on like where exactly I was. And so the, these lines started to get a bit wonky in a way. Yeah. You can see in the holes there. Uh, that I just wasn't satisfied with. So I think I'm gonna frog this again, frog this as well, frog this too. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit, this is the frog episode. Um, oh, for those who don't know, uh, frogging is when you pull out your knitting because you rip it, rip it, rip it out. I think I've said that before. Anyway, so I think I'm gonna, um, yeah, take this all out and do something else with the yarn. I actually have some some really cool uh, linen color work designs, or I guess something of one in particular um, came out this summer that I found really inspiring. And I have um, an idea. I have a lot of summer garment ideas. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm gonna frog this and um, use all, I have a few different skeins of this in a few different colors and I have a project idea for next summer. So I'm just gonna, yeah, uh, take this out. And again, learning, like learning opportunity, learning process, um, trial and error is part of the crafting journey. And um, so yeah, I'm not, like I'm not feeling um, upset about any of this. Like, I mean, I don't, I mean, it wasn't my goal. I'm not like ecstatic about it, but I just mean, um, I'm not, I'm not too stressed about it. And, uh, yeah, you know, anyway, that is this one. Um, and then I will move right into another finished object. So, um, something else that I do, I've just, I've done this like a couple times for some family and friends, and it is something I'm looking to potentially expand and do more of. Um, but anyway, I call it the baby box. And um, basically I make like four to six, I say five, I'll just say five instead of trying to make it a range. I make five pieces 
um, for someone's baby or toddler or, you know, nibbling, niece, nephew, whatever. And um, I have like a price for that. And so I make the five items anyway. And so I do this for my friend, um, Jonathan, and his daughter's name is Vera. And so I have made um, another uh, Penguino. I just knew um, the Penguino, for those who don't know, by Stephen West. I've made it for Sophia, uh, my daughter, who you can see in my Everything I Knit for Sophia video, which is a few back. Um, Sophia loved her Penguino. She got lots of use out of it. She wore it tons. I don't know if she's still wearing it. Um, so, and I made it pretty big, like Vera's only going to be two um, this year on Christmas Eve. Um, but I made a sort of more like the like four-year-old size so that she can grow into it a bit. This isn't blocked yet, so it might um, stretch a bit. But um, yeah, I just like, I really love these colors. Um, this is all yarn that I had in my stash. Um... A lot of it, or some of it, is still left from um, the Paint and Bricks sweater I did for Kyle ages ago. Like, that gray is in this sleeve. Um, this turquoise is from that. Um, there's also a lot of the uh, mini skeins from the Les Garçons holiday box last year um, when I decided not to do the cowl. So a lot of those colors are in here. Um, some of this particular welt is from um, that Apricity Knit City Canada box I got way, 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 way back that I did the um, arm warmers out of with the maple syrup. So it's, I'm, I'm getting into like stashness and scrappiness and how to use leftover yarn um, towards things. I love how this turned out and how all the, these colors work together and the sort of blues and grays. I feel like it is like, wintry without being drab you know what I mean and um it's like Vera's parents don't necessarily want traditional girly colors for her so I liked that I could use blues but it's still to me it's very unisex like it's there are sort of like either way I feel like a <laughs> a toddler being gendered male or female could both wear this you know um anyway so that's another finished object. I love this pattern. And um, yeah, so that's just something else that I've been up to. As I was mentioning before, and as many of you know, if you are knitters, um, Stephen West very famously does a mystery knit along shawl project every October. Um, like I say, I will be doing more content about that coming up, so I don't need to talk about it that much more. It's just to say that it made me, I'm trying to finish the shawl of his that I had on needles for a long time before the MCAL starts. Um, although I don't know if I'll be able to. So this is the, um, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is the uh, woven chevrons shawl. And um, I've showed it to you before. It's Artful Bell uh, is the um, yarn, which is a Canadian company. And um, yeah, so it just, it keeps growing like, every repeat you add uh, like a chevron. And so I'm on the second last repeat now. So this is that there's eight in total and the design has nine. So the thing is like, you're obviously allowed, I could stop at any time. It's mine. It is a pretty good size, but I don't know, there's like some part of me that does want to do like the full nine repeats and have it in that full size. So, but like the rows are getting long and uh, today's Monday. Yeah, I'm realistic. I don't think there's any way I will actually have this finished by Thursday when the MCAL starts. But, um, you know, I will finish it this fall. You know, I'm sure I'll have it done even if I don't get to work on it again till November or something like that, I'm sure I will finish it in November. So I have just, I've been working away on that from time to time. And then um, the other one that you have seen before that I've just been continuing on is um, the Elf Mail by uh, Danny Miga. And um, this one is sort of also related to the MCAL because 
I was using the uh, leftover yarn I had from my Twists and Turns shawl. I believe that's what it was called, the MCAL last year. Uh, I'm doing this because I'm going to put up a photo, a photo of it. So I had leftovers of each of those colors of yarn. So I decided to um, pair them with black and put it all together in an elf mail, uh, which if you recall, I had previously made one that was too small. So I was trying to do a bigger size. So here is the progress on that. So I'm getting there, like, um, but I still have a bit of a ways to go in the body, like, I don't know, maybe five more inches or something. And then uh, obviously both sleeves. So I had, you know, wanted this done for the fall. I had imagined wearing it in October. Um, I'm not sure if that can happen now, but again, like, whatever point this winter I finish this, it will be a joy and I'm looking forward to wearing it and showing you more. Another whip I have is, I, I was sort of mentioning in a previous episode that I was thinking about knitting a jock, but I wasn't sure. So I decided to sort of take the plunge and try that. Um, so this is what I have so far. The pattern is the Ammo Jock Strap by Jamie McCandless. Um, it's sort of all over Instagram. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess depending who you follow. Um, so anyway, I decided to use cotton. I just couldn't, I couldn't totally get into the idea of like a wool undergarment, like wool underwear just seems, I just wasn't quite ready to take that plunge. So I decided to use cotton. Um, and I like, I'm loving how it looks. It just... There's something about the sizing that isn't making sense to me. Like, I feel like this band looks a lot longer than the ones in the photos, um, although it's like the right number of garter ridges and rows. And then now that I'm doing the body and like it's starting to build the, out the cup, like it just, it just looks really long to me. And the number of rows that it's saying, I just feel like it's gonna be too big and too long. Like, I feel like I'm making granny panties as a jock strap. Um, so I really don't know yet what the issue is. Like, I don't know if my gauge is just way off. I don't know if my row count is somehow off. Um, I'm so scared of giving like pattern feedback now, but like there's, in this pattern, they'll give say like row one, do this, row two, do this. And then it'll say rows three through 40, repeat rows one and two. So like, I get that that's fine, but I prefer it in patterns where they say, repeat rows one and two X number of times, because then I know how many times to do it. This way, I feel like I have to figure out, okay, like, you know, three to 40 is however many rows, like 38 rows. But if it's like doing you're doing row one and then row two, so then you have to divide that by two. So what's that, 15 and four, 19? So I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna repeat it 19 times. So I just find I might be doing that math wrong, <laughs> like, and that's literally why too, but, or it might be fine and I'm just panicking. So anyway, that's where I am with this. Um, I'm like interested in it as a project, but it's just, not like my highest priority this fall, especially with everything else that is coming. Um, and then the last thing I have to show you is probably the most beautiful thing I've ever made and probably the thing I'm most proud of. And I'm really excited about it. So maybe that's a good note to end on. And I won't talk about um, other exciting things that I have coming down the pipe or other design goals that I have. I'll do that next week or the week after. As I say, I'm going to be posting a lot during October, um, weekly for the MCAL on Thursdays, but hopefully other content as well. So um, this pattern is called Dark Academia by Sharon Hartley. And as soon as I saw it, I just fell in love and knew I had to make it. Um, so I started thinking about colors. Well, I'll put a picture up here. This is the Dark Academia sweater. I didn't know that Dark Academia was like an aesthetic that's known. Like you can find all kinds of Dark Academia mood boards and Dark Academia things. Like it's a whole, um, yeah, a whole aesthetic that I had just never heard of. Um, and this sweater very much fits into it. 
So for my yarns, I went with um, my old trusty beloved small fish yarns and um, Jeanette as always was an incredible pleasure to work with and order from and everything and the yarns are gorgeous um, so the yarns are called um, truffle is the darker brown and then um, burnt embers or burnt cinders Cinders, I think, isn't it? Anyway, I will put it up right here. Um, and it is a color work. Well, you've just seen the picture of it, so I don't need to tell you what it is. So I've just done the yoke. And I love it. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm in love with it. Um, it's just turning out so gorgeously. And it's been fun to knit. I've done... Like, I guess the elf mail is my other, like, fingering weight, color work sweater. Um, I get why they're intimidating to people, but they're so worth it. So here are the floats on the back, which look gorgeous in and of themselves. And, um, yeah, so I have just completed the first chart, which is the yoke. And then the next thing you do is split for the sleeves. Uh, there's a certain length. So she tells you, um, so this, oh my God. Words! Um, the last row of the color work chart, she says, repeat that row until the piece measures a certain amount from the center of your cast on to the edge. Mine already measures longer than that number for my size. So A, I'm not sure what that's about. Like, why is it already longer? But the thing is, I have to try this on because I don't want to make the same mistake I made with the elf mail, which is where I split for the sleeves too soon. And just in the brief trying on that I've done, um, it's not quite there yet. Like someone suggested to me that it should be at least an inch below your armpit before you um, divide. So, I wasn't like there was part of me that did not want to repeat that row because I feel like that might be a nicer look and like I say the length is already longer than what's said but my sort of experience of having things not fit well is not one that I would like to repeat and so I do think I will do like five or ten rows of just that same row over and over again to add about another inch um, just to make sure that that sleeve separation happens at the right place on my body, because as I've said before, I'm just a long, tall person, um, and I want it to fit right. So, but anyway, that's another one that I think I'm going to have to put away for most of October because I want to be doing the MCAL. Oh, and also not featured here, I mean, I'll show it next time, but I'm also doing another Phantom Fuzz. Um, I'll show mine. Uh, so my mom loved this so much that she asked me to make one for her for her birthday, and her birthday is October 23rd. Um, so I'm also working on that. So I'll have like my mom's Phantom Fuzz, the MCAL, those are my two highest priorities. Then I like a design piece that I'm working on and then all of these whips. So I just, like, I just have an insane amount of knitting all the time, but that's uh, how I like to live my life. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sticking with me and for coming back. Um, please let me know in the comments below how your summer knits went what you're planning to do for fall. Are you doing the MCAL? Um, I love having conversations with you guys in the comments. Um, you can also find me on Instagram as Fairy Godfather Knits, and you can email me uh, fairygodfatherknits at gmail.com. Um, yeah, I will see you in not that long. I will have something up on Thursday for week one of the MCAL. I'm thinking that, like... Um, for that first week, because we'll just be getting the clue that day, I will just, um, I'll talk about the MCAL last year and show my shawl from last year and then show the yarn that I'm going to be using um, for this year's MCAL. Uh, so thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy your knitting. 
and um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.